Let's have some fun solving this really, really hard problem. Let's see if I can even explain this. So we're uh, we're asked to find the period. We're given this rod, and there's it's attached to a spring. It's pulled down slightly and then released. And then we're trying to find the period of the oscillations, that stuff going back and forth. Well, um, in order to get started with this, we're going to need to remember the equation RF equals IA. This is a really important equation, and we're just going to have to maybe start with the left side, RF. If we can figure out what RF is, that would be awesome. Turns out that there is a force over here. It's, there's a spring here. It's a spring force. What's the spring force again? Um, well, technically it would be X here, but what is X? Um, let's, let's imagine this as this, as this pendulum. Isn't this kind of more like a... A curved line? If you were to try to figure out what is x in a curved line, hmm, well, isn't that usually s equals r theta? But here's the problem. See, s is, is this curved line, but remember that we're using a small angle approximation, small angle approximation. So that's nice. That means that we can just simply say that x equals r theta. All right, because it's such a small angle that that curve line is just about as about the same size as the actual um, as the distance itself. So because of that, instead of doing um, something really complicated here for the force, we can just say it's kx. That's the spring force. All right, it's just a simple case, simple kx. Now, the question is. How to represent that as torque because don't we need to figure out what uh, the whole RF sine theta thing, right? We have to, it's really RF sine theta. How do we get rid of the sine again? Remember that the best way to set up the torque is to have it to be perpendicular to the rod that you're, or to the line here that you're. Um, that you're that you're torquing. So go ahead and just make that a perpendicular, and then. What is that line? If you could figure out what that line is, that's the new force line, that component of force. Well, we're given this theta, okay, and we, um, and if we know that theta, we know that this is actually a theta as well, right here. Um, and so, um, and so what happens is, is this is actually, uh, um, it's, it's if we're trying to figure out that it's cosine theta because um, if we know this angle here and we're trying to figure out that then and you know the hypotenuse then remember it's cosine of theta is and here I'll just make sure I'll put that on the left side cosine of theta equals the um, adjacent angle which is this one um, we'll call that one ah uh, Okay, that's really the line that we want. We want F, and we know this being Kx, that's the hypotenuse, so we're just gonna do adjacent over hypotenuse. We don't even need to color code that one, so it's gonna be F over Kx, isn't it? And, um, and then we can just go ahead and move that to the other side so that we get uh, F is equal to Kx cosine theta. And when we're using small angles, cosine theta will actually just simplify down to one. So F is really just equal to Kx uh, <laughs> coming over here, which is uh, interesting. Um, and yes, that's true. So keep in mind though, that X is actually equal to R theta. We're gonna have to plug that into this X value, okay? <laughs> I know it's a little bit complicated, but just, you know, Keep that in mind. And R is just this length. And we know this length. Um, uh, we're gonna wanna actually change this in terms of L because we're having to use I. So let's just consider this as being an L. And obviously R is equal to L over two. So we'll replace that in there for R as well. So not only is X equal to L over two, um, but uh, so X, F is actually equal to uh, K L over two theta. All right, um, so that's
that's kind of interesting right there. Now this is what we're going to want to put in right there for F. Awesome. And R, again, was L over 2. So we have L over 2, and then K, L over 2, theta. We're making progress. That's going to be equal to I. What is I of this? Well, remember that if you have an axis right here and you have a rod, then the I is actually just equal to 1 12 um, L or M, M L squared. So this is M L squared here. Shazam. And we can plug that into there. We're going to get M L squared over 12. And we have A. Now, if you remember this little equation, uh, a t is equal to negative w squared, and then this thing is theta max cosine of w t plus that. Well, remember that a max is essentially this part. So w squared, and I guess you could put a negative there if you want. But anyway, that's the idea. So a is actually equal w squared theta. And that's what we're going to plug into there. <laughs> and that's going to get us somewhere further. Let's start simplifying this equation. I'll put that over here. So L squared over 4K theta is equal to ML squared over 12 uh, and then this is w squared theta. Thetas will cancel, L squares will cancel. We're left with k over 4 equals m over 12 w squared. Why do we need w squared? Because remember t, the equation for t is actually t equals, I'll put that over here, um, t equals 2 pi over w. So if we can figure out w, and we can figure out t. We're so close, guys. Look, this is just going to be multiply 12 on both sides. And we've got 3k equals m w squared. Divide that by m, square it, and you're left with w. Now you can plug that back into over there. 2 pi over square root of 3k over m. And you should get your answer once you plug this in. Um, that should be close to like 0 0.11. And... Um, I suppose this is seconds because this is in the period. So that was a really cool problem has <laughs> to sort of deal with all sorts of things, including um, the small angle approximations and uh, dealing with this force thing, the angle pro uh, proper angle, this really important equation, remembering that alpha is this, and just reusing the proper period equation because there's a lot. There's like three or four different ones, and you just have to use the simplest one. Hopefully this was uh, helpful.